It is my extreme honor to have back on the show, Samantha Burns. So good to talk with you today. We've uh, good talked about you. We've talked about your your wonderful company and the things that you're doing in the CX space, kind of leveraging technology to help leaders make great decisions on behalf of uh, customers, um, mm -hmm. and sometimes on behalf of compliance institutions who require them to do so. But hopefully, mostly out of a genuine heart for understanding how important it is to leverage the voice of the customer, to design around the customer. And today we're really going to focus on customer voice. You know, I talk a lot about feedback loops when it comes to customers. You know, we need to be able to benefit from the feedback they give us and then use it to construct something that's going to improve their individual lives, but the overall lives of those they serve. So with that, you have this amazing complaints reporting tool. Let's talk a little bit about it and uh, what it does and why you decided this was important. Great, great. Well, briefly what it does, it's, it's really a simple tool. It's uh, not a full complicated uh, multi-dimensional complaints management system. There are uh, brilliant systems available that do that type of thing, but yes, they come at a, a very different price ticket. What the complaints reporting tool does is cater for two types of companies, either for a company that is um, a distributed uh, type of network business model where they uh, distributed services or distributed sales or a company that is currently using Excel or some other inadequate form of tracking complaints currently and and really just needs a, a more robust tracking methodology for more effective reporting but not with all the bells and whistles that comes with a, a complaints management system. So, so, so the simplicity is one of the key key yeah. elements, and you're saying that it appeals to a couple of different uh, groups. Obviously, it would be someone who is not willing to invest in huge and expensive complaint management uh, systems. Um, so that's one, I would imagine. Is there yeah. a sweet spot of how small or how big I am that this tool might fit me? I'm using Excel. Clearly, that would be an indicator, right? Sure, sure, sure. That could be sure. a good sign. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so a small company often is, is using Excel, but I must be honest, I have seen larger companies using Excel and uh, uh, particularly where they have multiple divisions that are handling complaints because this division wants to handle it in their way because it's their product and they believe it's a different customer segment. So they have a, a, a different methodology. So the, the system can very well cater across different types of products. Uh, different uh, customer segments and and be, still be able to report on on different types of dimensions that the company wants. So, so how does this how does this work? Like, let's say I, I issue a complaint to a, a, a company through whatever channel. How is yeah. that information you know accessed and then introduced into your system? What if it is actually introduced on an Excel spreadsheet? Does it import? I mean, just some of the, yeah, the yeah. fundamental understandings of how does this, you know, help me essentially? Yes. And where sure. does the information come from? Right. So the, the 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 primary input for the information is the agent who's handling the complaint, whether they've received that complaint via email, uh, via telephone conversation, via a face-to-face -face conversation with the client, they are capturing the complaint online and so on. Or the, comp the customer themselves may capture the complaint uh, using the company's website and, and hence then feed directly into the system. So that would be the, the, the primary ways of input of data. If a company has a history of complaints that they're wanting to capture, they and, and they've got all of that information on Excel. If we can uh, configure that Excel spreadsheet in, in the columns of appropriate information that we need, well, what the client wants to be able to report on, then we can upload that as well, just to, to kind of catch up on history so they don't lose the trends and the, and the patterns of what they've been uh, capturing so far in their uh, at somewhat uh, an ideal fashion. So let me let me try to be very basic about this. I mean, there, it seems like there would be a fairly standard platform that people would enter the complaints into, and assuming yeah. they didn't have that legacy history and they wanted to start fresh with you, 
they would be trained on how to use that platform and how to configure it relative to the specific interests of their business. Is that a fair way of thinking of this? Close, close. So they they would they, they hardly need training because it really really is it's it's like if you know how to navigate a website you should be able to navigate your way around how to add a complaint and then how to edit it afterwards because it really is just a set of drop select boxes but the configuration that happens up front is where the client in it, it pre pre kind of go live for for that particular client they will specify they say well these are the drop select options that they want for product type or complaint type or root cause or um, any other elements that are, are so easily configurable within the system so we would then do that configuration for them then it's it's preset up specifically for that company labeled with their with their logo and their, their branding and then they can make it available either only internally to their staff or externally to their um, their third parties now what what's clever with the third party type of setup is is a, well perhaps i should just give you an example where one of our clients they have various third parties who distribute their products, but not only their products. They distribute mm. products for other companies too. So now if they are going to be capturing complaints, they want to capture complaints of, of all the different products, not just this company's product on the same platform. Yet the, the company that's wanting the information will then only get reports so it will automatically feed reports to the the supplier of a particular product concerning complaints of their product only even and those other suppliers those other suppliers aren't going to get the benefit of that information and knowledge because they haven't actually purchased exactly. use of that yep. platform but yep. the the distributor is able to capture all of those complaints by supplier uh in a way that's valuable to them I it would seem yeah 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 yeah. So but it works both ways. So there's value for the supplier because they now want to, you know, they are now hearing for the first time complaints that have been captured at distribution level that they weren't hearing before because, you know, they've been only been hearing complaints that come directly to them. And if they're lucky, what the distributors tell them. Now, if they implement this, this type of system, they then have a way of tracking to say, well, surely supply, I mean, distributor, you're getting some complaints from clients. How come nothing is being captured here? So they can then gather that that feedback. Um, so value for the supplier, so they can get input as to what's going, what type of complaints are coming in on their products and value for the distributor. It sounds like it's even added value for the supplier in that they get to determine which of their distributors are fairly responsible oh, yeah, yeah, about yeah. capturing and managing complaints as well. Absolutely. So it's like this trifecta of benefits, yes. if you will. Yeah. So, all right, so the capturing of the complaints and then there's the ability to categorize root causes, do some root cause analysis because, yes. you know, collecting just a pile of complaints unless there's some kind of ability to analyze uh, from whence they came or how you could resolve them is only half of the story. It's like one hand clapping or something, right? I mean, <laughs> tell me Absolutely. a little bit, tell me a little bit about that, that, oh, the insights that one might gain yeah. from yeah. capturing the data on complaints. Yeah. So yeah, hence the name complaints reporting tool. Uh, the, the real emphasis is on the on the reports that the companies will get, either the distributor or the or the supplier, or just the company if it's within their own division and so forth. So the types of reports they can pull are are, are pretty vast, uh, related to any cross section of of mapping of the of their complaints. So they can look at how many complaints did they get per product or um, how long did complaints take to be resolved when they were this type of complaints or um, how many complaints are we getting that are justified versus not justified so the, it, it's justified in the customer's eyes of course so every complaint is valid as far as the customer's concerned but as far as the company's concerned there are times where they, they really weren't at fault Right. The unhappy customer absolutely got to deal with them, make them happy. But the, the company didn't do anything wrong. 
Um, so the trends can then pick up well, where the complaints justified versus unjustified. Um, also uh, tracking of regulatory complaints. Uh, so there's this field specifically dedicated to that root cause, as you mentioned, so you can analyze what types of complaints are having common root causes that if we address that one root cause um, and then to see once you've addressed that one root cause, is it causing a, a, a reduction in those types of complaints? Um, you can see uh, complaint turnaround times per agent. So is one agent taking much longer for a complaint of a certain type generally than another agent dealing with the same type of complaint? So the yeah, the, the type of analysis is 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 fabulous. You can you can cross section whatever way you want. Plus just knowing what's open and what's closed, right? I mean, exactly. that in and of itself is an insightful yeah, yeah journey for many brands because they don't there's a bunch of complaints out there but how many of them have we effectively resolved yes yes and various notifications that go out when a complaint is taking too long to be resolved um so you know there are a few alarm bells built into the system to remind people to do what they need to do and the ability to see complaints that your colleagues have received and is there so, a, a, a potential to escalate that complaint so that if I'm on the front line and I'm to manage the complaint and it's taking me a long time, that the alert can be sent up to someone else if, yes. if I'm not attending to it? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, yeah, good. So, yeah. again, we, we talk about there are solutions like this, I mean, that are very, very integrated, very expensive. Yeah our big purchase ticket items, very customized. It seems like you've shot the middle here, right? I mean, you've kind of said there's a lot of people who can't afford those solutions. There are a lot of people who are working, you know, in with abacus, you know, in terms of doing their math on these things. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. how do we find the right size technology that's customizable for mm -hmm. people who are small, medium, but some large players too, who are seeing better use of their dollars somewhere else. Um, is that really the mind space that went behind the development of this particular tool? It is, it is. It was originally designed for a distributed setup um, and hence that it, it caters so well for that. But since then there's been companies that say, well, no, we just want it for ourselves. Thank you very much. It, it works adequately for our needs. Um, it's, you know, they don't need the full, the full integration in their particular setup. I imagine in many large companies, they need, um, you know, AI chatbots, um, that type of if, uh, filtering of complaints. That's not what this offers. It, it really is designed more for where there is the human to human connection. Um, and uh, personally, because I, I believe that when it comes to a complaint, you really do need that human connection. Well, and getting and, the AI wrong on a complaint is a real big problem, right? I mean, shoot. miscategorizing an a, yep. you know, via AI a complaint, and while it will learn to get it more right the next time, in this <laughs> time when it is completely misascribed, it can be it can be very hazardous to a relationship with a particularly. Sure. You know, if you're an enterprise level client. Um, so, yeah, that that's this is interesting, kind of this this awareness. Where do you I mean, I know your background in training and you're one of the probably best trained customer experience professionals or really kind of went to school to be a customer experience person. You've grown up in the financial services industry and have really catered you know, to understanding the nuances of, of regulatory uh, factors, for example, in, in customer experience in in that sector. But this marriage of technology and the human is something that I am not only a believer in, but that many companies are missing out on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not fascinating to me how someone's brain can do both those things, because most of us tend to err on one side or the other of this equation. Mm -hmm. You're trying to help them with a solution that gets them in the middle of the lane. But how did you come to deciding, hey, I, we, need a, we need a tool that enables humans to respond meaningfully without encumbering them or removing them from the equation. Yeah, yeah. I think my my love for complaints, if I can put it that way, started, gosh, in, in, in 94. Uh, I was recruited to work directly with a, a CEO who, uh, he directly used to receive complaints from his corporate clients. And this company now is, multi-billion dollar international firm 
but he, you know, when they, those type of complaints come directly to him, he needed to send someone out as a troubleshooter and, and, and I became the, the troubleshooter. Initially, when I, I, I handling those complaints directly, so visiting the companies, listening to their issues, um, it was it was terrible because you, you 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 you're horrified that your colleagues could be doing this type of thing to to cause such pain to to customers. But over time, I, I really came to deeply appreciate customer complaints. And, and the ability to just be available to, to hear them when the CEO just didn't have the time, um, but the genuine interest. And I think that's also part of the, the spark. So one, it's a great appreciation for what these customers were telling us. They were giving us a golden opportunity to rectify before they just leave. So, so I, I, that was deeply appreciated. But on the other hand, the, the CEO's deep commitment to saying, I want to hear what's not working so we can fix it. And yeah, really, it's a very different mindset than lots of companies have. And certainly the CEO is one of those complaints managed before they ever get up to them, right? I mean, like that's your job in ops yeah, yeah, is yeah. to resolve these problems. Yeah. Uh, I have yeah. to think strategy. So it's kind of interesting to see someone who had such a heart for uh, making sure that he was or she was aware of, you know, what was the the, the pain yeah. point in the yeah. journey of, of the customer. So, you know, this is a very big aggregate tool it enables people to kind of look at the aggregate realities of the complaints. Um, is there, a, and, and I think we may get this and, you know, we've talked about learning uh, and the commitment of learning to resolve these complaints, but you would also want to be able to train your people on how to manage these complaints, sure. not, just that, not just in a, you know, spreadsheet or mindset, but in a more humanized uh, and activated solution mindset. Right? Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Sure, sure, sure. So complementing the, the, the tool, when a company wants, um, I do provide training and coaching uh, with regards to, to complaint, complaint handling and complaint management. I separate the two because the, the people handling the complaints, they, it's, it's a different uh, need uh, in terms of having the energy to hear complaints over and over again without becoming like totally downcast that, you know, what am I doing working at this place if there's so many complaints or just becoming numb. Like, right. oh, another, I've heard that another one. Complaint. Yeah, I've, I've heard, heard that, that before. before. Oh, you too. You're, you're, it's just, a, you know, it's by category of complaint rather than by human pain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, so, so the, the parallel universe is this this training on how to handle as opposed to this tool, which is the kind of gets you the, the ability to manage, right? It's the acquisition of insights around it and accurate reporting of complaints such that you can then have a response mechanism that's um, something else you craft through your coaching. Yeah, yeah. The, the added compo component to the complaint management side is not only to have the tool that generates reports that gives you the insights and so that gets reported up to Exco and they see, you know, say, okay, fine, so what are we doing about it? But it's more the, the, the management in terms of the full closing of the loop to say, what are we doing as an organization to make sure those complaints aren't just being coming up over and over again? And, you know, ultimately to, improve the, the the issues that are causing those complaints, even if they're not justified complaints, there's something going wrong that the customer is, is giving us that feedback that uh, we then need to say, well, how do we not only rectify them, but get back to the customers and identify where potentially there's a complaint that even though one customer has had that complaint, we resolve it for them, but what about 20 other customers who potentially have got the same complaint who have not yet complained and may well just walk out the door? So doing more. Or, or better. To, or, and, and while they're walking out, share it with every single other human. Oh, even know. worse. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know which is worse, but they're, they're uh, both pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's bad to lose their revenue plus, you know, the yeah. revenue plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. I mean, you said you're really talking about an internal loop inside of the company to use the information gathered from the complaints tool to be able to then use it internally for the insights needed to reduce the probability of that happening for this customer or others. And then the other, I think, in the complaint management, I'm sorry, the more of the the complaint, uh, I don't even remember your term now, but uh, the ability to resolve them on yeah. behalf of the customer, that's the external uh, loop, right? The loop out to the customer trained yes, on how yes. to help them uh, yeah. resolve the pain. Um, so that's a, really a powerful, and it starts with information, and information yeah. is power only if it's usable, right? I mean, that's the problem. Either it lives in a, a spreadsheet somewhere that that isn't shared robustly across the organization. It's not in a dashboard form where people can see it. It's siloed from one department to another. There's so many ways in which great information becomes non-usable. And so the goal, it sounds like, is A, to get great information, and B, yeah. to get it in a position where people can use it both internal loop and external loop on behalf of the customer. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's And, and it's to me, many companies do have information. Uh, there's data richness in many organizations. Uh, what is sometimes lacking is, is also the heart to, to, to translate that information into, into real action. And that is often driven by the leader's priorities. So um, I get horrified when companies, when the execs, what all they want to see is um, a reduction of complaints and a reduction of the of the time that it takes to handle the complaints. I totally agree. Ultimately, we do want to reduce the complaints, but don't be sending the message to the the people handling the, the complaints that that actually minimise the re reporting of it or or um, a complaint is a bad thing. I've dealt with some firms where the staff individuals, no, they don't want to capture the complaint, particularly if they resolve it immediately over the phone. Um, and then they, they say, oh, they call it a query rather than a complaint mm -hmm. because it was already resolved. So therefore the issue's gone away. So, what, you know, what's there to report? And, right. it's, it, you know, it's almost like they're defensive that, oh, no, we can't call it a complaint. Um, because execs don't want to hear that there's complaints and we would rather have fewer complaints than, than record everything that comes our way. So it, it's driven very much by what the execs set as the, um, the real intention behind hearing the voice of the customer through complaint feedback. And I, I think there's huge value in complaints if, if there's, there's a greater openness to really hearing what customers are saying. Um, it's, I, I think you can do customer surveys, but there's tons already sitting in your, your queries department and your, and your complaints department. Um, well, I, there's so much in here. I mean, I, I, my mentor, Horst Schultze, once told me that he wants to hear as many complaints as he can possibly hear. Um, yeah. And he also wants to be perfect, which means mm -hmm. that he wants the same complaints to stop. I mean, it's yes, kind of a yes. fundamental awareness that there are certain complaints that we should figure out by now. And there's a whole new sea of things that happen, sometimes unintended negative consequences of a positive effort that we need to understand that we had never saw coming in, but thanks to our customers, we now appreciate how you know we, we've created some other pressure on the system. Just, I think the mindset about complaints is so rich and, and something there. The other thing I would say really quickly is that sometimes in the midst of a complaint, there's also compliments. You know, a lot of people, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll give two positives before they'll say the negative, right? And there's some richness too in being able to not only hear the complaint voice, but the other things that are going right alongside of the things that need opportunity to be worked on. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I, just being I, I, open I, to listening, you hear it all, I guess is what I'm saying. Exactly. And I think that's that's part of the training that we focus on is one, having the energy to to constantly be open to hear what customers are saying, but really reading between the lines, because there's, there's much that customers are saying if, if you take the time to analyze it, um, particularly if they write it. Um, there's even more information there. Yeah. 
I think the number of complaints Starbucks got about having to wait in line to uh, to pay for your coffee was a key driver in the technology that allowed for mobile pay, which was a game changer, not only in re remedying the customer complaint, right, but but also in the speed of time in the cafe, which also meant more processing of orders. The upside was immense, but it started with, you know, complaint awareness. And I think that that's just such a gift you can give someone. All right, so let's talk about the, the way people can find out more about the tool uh, from you and, and where they can learn more about the tool in terms of any other assets that might be around. Right, so easiest way is to contact me, sam at brilliancesuccess.com or currently at samantha at brilliancesib.com. Um, my new website is still under construction, believe it or not. Uh, since I have been uh, pushing for for new elements in it, so it's it's been a, a journey of note. But I, I guess that it will will yield its its fruit eventually. Uh, I have a complaint. You need to get the website done. That's my complaint. Uh, exactly, I agree. Right. <laughs> Good. Well, suffice it to say, they can find out plenty about you, though, the existing website, right? I mean, I, I've spent time on the existing website and they can learn about the complaint tool and they can they can link back there. And we'll make sure that we provide those in the show notes as well. So, again, thank you, Sam. I know there are a couple other Thanks. solutions you have in the technology space, so people can be looking forward to us sharing those in the uh, in the weeks and months to come. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Joseph.